I've been playing video games for about 25 years. One of my first memories was begging my parents for a quarter at the arcade just so I could get a little bit further at Galaga. Games used to be simple. You pay for the game, you play the game. But eventually, that all flipped. Instead of paying to play, you could be playing to get paid, whether that's from streaming or esports. He just made history, $3 million in prizing. But there's another economy at work where players can buy in-game items for real cash. This flaming mace is an echoing fury. In 2012, it was sold for roughly 10,000 real American dollars, making it one of the most expensive video game items ever sold. Which brings me to my question. Why would you spend money in a video game? Games have taken up years of my life, literally. I've spent more than a year in the games Counter-Strike and World of Warcraft, and as you can see, I was a pretty serious gamer. No! Over the last 20 years, developers have made it possible for you to spend more money in games. I sold my first EverQuest account on eBay for about 100 bucks. And years later, I paid my rent by playing World of Warcraft and selling the gold I made. What's up? Whoa, are we doing this? Yes. <laughs> Welcome. So when we talk about a virtual item in a video game, <laughs> these are a range of items and collectibles that can be bought, sold, traded, all depending on the game that you're playing. These are things like skins and weapons. And, yeah, yeah, totally. Sometimes they can make you more powerful, but sometimes it's just clout. Mm -hmm. uh, Showing off. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Take World of Warcraft. In that game today, you can buy this. This is Hogris, a flying pig that you can ride on. A flying pig? Yeah. Is this also $10,000? This is only $25. You can get the snazzy Fortnite dance. It's called Tidy for about 500 V-Bucks. That's Fortnite's currency. And those V-Bucks can be purchased for five real dollars in the game. I'm sorry, what, what is the Tidy? Uh, it's like a window wipe dance move. I haven't actually seen it yet. <laughs> this is a skin in the game, and basically it's just like a, it's a visual accessory that changes the way this gun looks. And this particular skin sold for $61,000. $61,000? It's just a commemorative special version of a skin that was very rare. There are many ways to buy virtual items. Free-to-play games like Fortnite allow you to buy items directly from the game using an in-game store but other games use online marketplaces, usually run by the gaming companies. In this case, players buy and sell items among themselves, and the game company takes a cut. But there's also another way, and it largely exists beyond the control of gaming companies. These transactions take place on third-party sites. They're unregulated and mostly against the rules, but players still use them to buy and sell items. Back in 2012, only some game makers allowed you to buy, sell, and trade items in-game with real cash and the total sum of virtual items in the market was $15 billion. And some investors estimate that today, the total value of these goods could be as high as $50 billion. Wow. To put that in perspective, that is more than the global box office of the same year. Why is this worth so much? My guess, I actually, I have no idea, I have no <laughs> guesses. Essentially, things are worth what anybody will pay for them. So if I have a, fictional castle, you want it, and you think it's worth $5, then it's worth $5. So an in-game economy is the same as a real-world economy. You've got a lot of people, you've got a lot of goods, and you've got currency. What's the difference? Nothing. Games are designed to give you a better experience the more time you spend in them. In some games, like World of Warcraft, there are daily quests where you have to log in and do the same thing time after time after time. But in most games, you just have to grind and spend a lot of time to be at the top of the game. On average, a player over 18 will spend more than seven hours a week in these digital worlds. I have a weapon in this game that took me 14 years to get. 14 years! But what if you could buy a better experience instead of just grinding out the game? Then a new thing started to happen when developers offered items that you couldn't even earn in the game. I'm talking about flying pigs. I'm gonna show you how to get one. So to get Hogris, I'm going to go to the main town and I'm going to open up the store. It's really easy, you just hit buy now, it connects you to the shop, 
find my credit card. And it says, thank you, you have just earned Hagra Swine of Good Fortune. I earned it, guys. Oh, he's in a little gift box. So let's see what happens when I click him. Hello? Are you there? Unwrap. And there he is, he popped out. So he runs. Oh! Look at him. Look at those wings. So this is the joy that spending $25 in a video game can bring you. So this is pretty cool. I'm gonna go to a Counter-Strike tournament and see why other players are buying virtual items. I'm headed to Skokie to talk to some gamers at the National Championship Series for an online shooter called Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Today, we're gonna see players compete for $10,000. We do practice almost every night. Those guys look kind of intimidating over there. Singularity is uh, number fourth in the US. Anything that you're like prepared for, excited about, afraid of? We're not really preparing for anything. It's kind of like the skill gap between us and even the second best team is so like high that we really shouldn't even drop a map here. Counter-Strike is a game that's been around for as long as most of these players have been alive. But the latest version of the game only recently adopted a new free-to-play model where instead of paying for the game, players are encouraged to buy and sell those skins in it by using a marketplace inside the game. Well, okay, OC making this expensive, knows where the remaining two players are, and he's gonna force the issue, he's going for this. If he pops one more head, this is so deadly, there it is! Hey. OC can win this, the 1v1, now no he way. gets it! OC! OC. So OC just got a four kill clutch play. Basically, he just killed the entire other team that was still alive by himself. Oh my God. So this is an AK-47 in the game and you've actually put stickers on it as well. So that's like Rosie the Riveter. One player has an AK-47 that's got like gold foil on it. Another player has a gun that looks like a water gun. These are all different skins that you can get in the game. Within the first two years of adding skins to the game, the Counter-Strike player base jumped by 1,500%. I actually spent a lot of money on skins. Probably spent like 2,000. Like dollars? Yep. Wow. And it just helps me stay motivated, I guess. Do those help you play better in the game? <laughs> no. <laughs> so what's the point of it? Uh, just to look cool. OK. You can always resell them. It's not yeah. like an asset that you're not able to invest into and then sell. And the, if you do it correctly, the price market fluctuates in a way where like you can buy it at a low point and sell it at a high point, if you're smart about it at least. So what that Counter-Strike player was talking about was buying and selling items in Counter-Strike to make a profit. Players have always found a way to make money, and early versions of online trades date back to at least the late 90s. Hello, I'm Marky Dragon, also known as Marcus Eikenberry in real life. I got into business uh, buying, selling, and trading of uh, intangible goods. I saw somebody who had like a sword for sale for 20 bucks on eBay, and I'm like, holy, I can do that. Then actually developed the website Marky Dragon. Essentially operating as a broker. Correct. Most of the game companies didn't want it. Legal for the different game companies started getting involved, and then, you know, things went south. After game developers work to end third-party marketplaces like Marquee Dragons, they begin creating their own. They formalize the exchange of real money with virtual goods and currency in games. But these developer-run marketplaces brought out a key concern with these virtual economies, and that's risk. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Diablo 3 auction house. Oh my god, yes. It was the wrong time to do it. And everybody and their mother said, oh my God, I'm gonna make some money playing a video game. But it imploded on them. So this auction house represents the game Diablo 3's auction house. The only difference between this game and other games like it, Blizzard, the creator of the game, decided that they wanted to experiment with making the auction house connected to real money. And I'm gonna give you some coins. These are so cool. <laughs> That's your face, so I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Penny, this is the greatest prop we've ever made. So Cleo, you've got 20 gold. Buy whatever you want. Let's get this started. All right, I probably want a shield Ooh. for 10 gold. And I really like curvy red one. Ah, uh, the scimitar, great choice. Now you're out of money, but you were only able to buy two items and that's really not enough. But imagine for a second if somebody found out a way to create their own gold. I'd want to know how they did that. Hey, Joss. Yes? 
Yeah, come on in. What's up? Money? Yes, and pretty soon you're gonna have a ton of it. Awesome. So in this case, Joss is a cheater who found a way <laughs> to duplicate this gold. And she's going to be able to buy everything she wants. How do I duplicate this? So there was a bug in the auction house that allowed players to duplicate their gold. And that's exactly what happened on May 7th, 2013. <gasps> it's a gold dupe! It's a gold dupe! It's a gold dupe! This Yay. is so awesome. You just doubled your money. And you could have made one billion into two billion right now. You have all the gold you want, so you can buy whatever you want now. I'm just gonna take it all. I mean, that's what you do, right? Do you know how much people are buying items right now? <laughs> and then I'll leave two swords, how about that? Okay, since you just bought out everything of value, even the middle quality items were highly sought after. So eventually what happened was hyperinflation and those prices changed because people could spend anything on it. The dollar values are just dropping so rapidly. One area of it spins out of control, the whole thing collapses. Nobody knew what to do. Because remember, you could sell this gold for real money. The auction house functions just like the gold auction house does. The only difference, of course, is that now real money is involved. They might be making profits around 50,000 euro in just one day. This is just crazy. Wait, 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 wait. That, you can sell that for real money? Yes. Can I sell this for real money? Yes. Oh, good. Wait, I clearly want to sell everything for real money. <laughs> we want real money, Alex. <laughs> Let's do this. So Joss puts all of her items on the auction house before the game maker can figure out what's going on. Joss gets a boatload of money. Joss does get a boatload of money. So that's for you. <laughs> Within just a few hours, Blizzard shut down the game. This whole thing only lasted a few hours. But before Blizzard could go in and correct the bug, a lot of damage had been done. They couldn't go back and change or reverse the real money trades that had taken place because people like Joss had already gotten their money. So they deleted player accounts. Oh my God. Oh, oh no, I just got banned. Some people who weren't even duplicating gold got caught up in this. And I know that because it happened to me. I had a lot of gold on one account and it got banned and I lost an item that was worth about 400 bucks. 400 real dollars? 400 real dollars. Oh, Alex. Sucks. Yeah. The Diablo crash shows us how virtual economies can be riskier than real ones. They just don't have the same guardrails and protections. And a simple design bug can cause a catastrophe. So when people say that, oh, you bought something in a video game, it's like throwing your money down a pit that you'll never see again because you don't own it. So is the popcorn you bought at the movie theater. It's the experience. And that's so true. For most gamers, it's not about the money at all. In the first place, you shouldn't even be playing Counter-Strike for money. You should be playing it to reach the top, and succeed, and win. There's probably no better example of this than in the battle arena game, Dota 2. This annual competitive tournament, the International, has the biggest prize pool in all of gaming, $34 million in 2019. I decided to come to this Dota 2 tournament pub stop. This is in New York. I couldn't fly out to China where the game is actually taking place. In Dota, players could buy a virtual item called a compendium for the tournament. It's a bundle containing numerous quests, achievements, and earnable rewards. 25% of the sales went on to fund the prize pool for the tournament. And that's right, the biggest prize pool in all of gaming was almost completely crowdfunded by the fans. People who actually watch Dota itself feels like by um, buying the compendium, they're actually supporting uh, the professional players themselves. We all are like literally financially invested in this tournament. It's kind of more about the social aspect of getting together, sharing the passion for the game that we love. So at the end of this, why would you spend money in a video game? There's so many reasons why, but it just really comes down to investing in what you love. We're gonna talk about other. Beneath the surface, okay. Ow. <laughs>